Did you play Tetris growing up? I do, actually, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Do you think that's what inspired you to... No, I'm not sure about that. Can you tell us, what does Tetris have to do with your work? Well, okay, so that part of my work uh, concerns interface growth. And so the sort of thing that you can have in mind is, like, for example, if there's a forest fire, so the fire is burning, Behind it, it leaves a region that was burned. In front of it, there's a region which is unburned. Uh, and so you have an interface, which is the flame front that separates the two regions. Mm -hmm. And it moves clearly from somehow the burnt region into the unburnt region. And now, one thing we're interested in is in that type of situations to describe the fluctuations of that front. Right? So the front moves at some kind of average speed. But then the speed is not completely uniform, so there are bits that move a little bit faster, bits mm -hmm. that move a little bit slower. So after a while, it's going to, even if it starts out flat, uh, after a bit, it's going to look a bit rugged like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we're interested in is not so much the average position, but more like, you know, the random fluctuations on top. And so this is really not specifically about forest fires, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really about any situation which is, which is similar in flavor, in the sense that you have two regions, you're in two dimensions, so you're on the plane, uh, you have two regions, uh, one region wants to invade the other region, and there's a separation between the two, the separation moves, um, but it moves a bit randomly, and you're interested in understanding the fluctuations. So this is Tetris bricks versus So this is the Tetris space bricks above. versus empty space. Gotcha. Exactly. So, yeah. so the bricks are the fire. The bricks are the fire, the empty space is the grass or trees or whatever. Gotcha. Um, and so what other examples? You mentioned fires, we've got Tetris, we're going to come to. <laughs> Obviously the best so, one, but... So there's one example that people actually made very precise experiments, um, which is a liquid crystal. Mm. Uh, so that one you take a liquid crystal, so the same kind of liquid crystal as you have in your mobile phone or yeah. laptop screen. So. And that one, it, it also it comes in two phases, and they have different optical properties, so you can literally see the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And so all you have to do is take pictures of it, basically, to see which part is in which phase. Um, and one of them is, again, more stable than the other one, and so what you do is you prepare it in the unstable one, um, and then you take the laser beam and you zap it at it, mm -hmm. and where the, where the laser beam hits, the liquid crystal, it gives enough activation energy to flip from the unstable into the stable mm -hmm. state, right? And so you basically draw a line of the stable region, which you can, it's literally drawing, you actually see yeah. the difference in color. And then that one automatically broadens up because it's more stable, so it wants to invade the unstable region. And again, so you, have, you see a line that gets thicker and thicker, um, and it starts off really like a straight line, it gets thicker, but then the boundaries of that line start wobbling a little bit, right? and so you're interested in the fluctuations of that boundary. So it really doesn't um, matter at all in terms of the, the sort of overriding mathematics, physics behind right. it? It really doesn't right. matter so on it would be It would be essentially okay. the same mathematics. Uh -huh. um, so there's this idea of universality, which is that for some things, so for example, the average speed would be, you know, determined by what's the precise situation, so you couldn't predict it a priori, right? So there's no way, you just have to measure it. Yeah. But the shape of these fluctuations, the idea is that's something that's supposed to be universal, in the sense that it really should be the same, um, okay. the same shape, whatever situation, as long as it's the same type of situation. Right? Well, I, I would think everything you've described is inherently random mm -hmm. and yet you've sort of said that there's this universal yeah, but, behavior is that just right, the but universal that's in the same way in the same way as the you know the, the gaussian distribution the sort of bell curve yeah is also universal in a similar way right in the sense that you can if you add sufficiently many small random quantities whichever way these quantities behave individually when you add sufficiently many of them, you always get a bell curve. And it's always the same, right? The right. distribution of what you get is always going to be a Gaussian in the end. And so you right? So it's the same type of universality, except that here, instead of talking about the fluctuations of just one random number, 
you're talking about fluctuations of a random curve or random moving because it's a so curve that actually moves in time. Trying to find the Gaussian equivalent right. of these it's sort of the analog Exactly, like, so it's the analog of the Gaussian for in the four motion of interfaces. That's I why. see. Okay, so let's have a look at one of these interfaces. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> so, so since the idea is that the fluctuation should always be the same, well, it means if you take basically any sort of mathematical model, it doesn't have to have anything to do with reality, as long as it's, it has the same features. So it's in two dimensions, there's two regions, one region invades the other one, and there's some randomness involved. And the randomness that's involved is sort of more or less independent in different chunks of space. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so what you do here is you basically take a Tetris game. The Tetris bricks are falling down from the sky, but it's an infinitely wide Tetris game. And we're um, not controlling these. We are not controlling so it. So they just right. fall down randomly, and we don't play. Uh, and and we can't play. The shape of the brick is also random? Uh, the shape, exactly. So, so it's a, they're standard like, Tetris pieces. Like, I'm seeing the square, exactly. I'm seeing the so line. The standard and, Tetris bricks are yeah. in a random orientation, okay. random shape random location, and they just fall down, and they pile up according to So if you were really rules. bad at Tetris, it would look like this. Exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, except that that one is really wide, so you can kind of zoom out a bit, and you see that ah. they've been falling down everywhere, right? So you've got loads and loads of Tetris bricks piling uh -huh. up. Um, and now here you really see, you start to see that there's actually, you know, sort of a continuous curve here. Yeah. It, it looks like almost like branches or like a tree yeah, growing, yeah, yeah, yeah. growing outwards. Yeah, that's right. So you have these uh, these kind of canals forming, right? So you have the so when you if, oh, wow. you, if you zoom out, yeah, you see, sometimes you see these big canals. And that's just completely forming. random. That's there's there's no reason to expect that, or is um, no. So it's completely random. But um, I mean, you can you can more or less figure out why these canals form, right? Because it's it's when you have a big overhang. So if you have a big overhang, then it's going to persist for a while, but it's yeah. essentially going to move, right? Because the, uh -huh. the, there's an overhang, then bricks fall down, but then they sort of pile up diagonally, yes. right? And so it yes, makes it the is. overhang sort of move up diagonally. And that's yes. essentially these channels that you see, right? It's kind of these overhangs that and move up. Is that particular to Tetris? Like because um, of the shape of the brick? N well, it's because the, right, so, so if the bricks were just single bricks, Mm -hmm. and they just pile up, then that wouldn't be interesting in a way, right? Because, no. <laughs> because then the, there wouldn't be any interaction between, between the neighbors. Yeah. What happens at every point would just be completely independent from what happens at any other point, mm -hmm. uh, and then you wouldn't expect anything interesting. So here you can actually change the shape of the bricks. So for example, if you do this, so now it's Tetris with only square bricks. Ah. Right? So, so here, Right, so it's only square bricks, but they are two so, by two bricks. So everyone right, is so a they square. can actually everyone is a square, but they're oh. all two by two, so, so they can more. still so they can still pile up diagonally, right? So they can still form yes. these channels, for example, right? Whereas if okay. they were one by one, then they couldn't pile up diagonally. Yes, right? I so see. Then it, so then it would be very different. So this one's very similar. So this one's very to similar, Tetris, right? So I you see. see, you zoom out. So here you yes. still see the difference. It looks a little bit different because they're all the same bricks, but, right? But you know, by the time you're here, you don't really see the difference. No, that right? to, to me that looks the same. Yeah, it looks the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, right? it looks the same. Whereas if you did the just single bricks, so you can do that as well, and then it looks very uninteresting. So if we do the single <laughs> ones, and I, I reset the whole thing. So this is a single so, square. So now it's just single right. squares, um, and you see, so it just goes up like that, but you don't you don't have anything interesting forming. Of no, course, there's, there's no, no hole, there's yeah. no gaps anymore because yeah. you just pile up like that. Is there a reason for the spikes? Is, is there yes, some... because um, at every point you have something like uh, you just add up independent numbers, mm -hmm. and so you have a law of large numbers, which is the, you know, which is sort of the average height of the interface, yeah, 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 yeah. and then you have a central limit okay. theorem, which tells you kind of the height of these spikes is basically about the standard deviation of the Gaussian that you see in the central limit ah, theorem. Fantastic, because they do look about the same up and, and down. Yeah, like yeah you've yeah, said yeah. like. Yeah. 
But you see that they get larger and larger because of the okay. square root of n in the central limit theorem. Right? So yes. it moves up uh, at speed, that linear speed, and the spikes get larger is, at square root of I already theorem. liked the central limit theorem. But after seeing this, I now like it even more. Oh. Like, this is, <laughs> I'm going to use this to teach this. This is amazing. So, so one thing you can do, so this one is also single Ooh. breaks, but this time the single breaks can also stick to the neighbors. Right? And then it's really much more like Tetris again, right? Because then they can so again, again grow, they can grow diagonally. We're seeing the gaps. We're and you can see the, the gaps, you see the same sort right. of thing, right? So, so this time, so if we just look at what happens, you see they fall down, ah, but they actually one's... stick, they stick to the right. It's like the magnetic so, oh, to, exactly. to, a to yeah, the yeah, two yeah. either side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, okay. You see, and then you, you zoom out again, it looks basically the same as Tetris. Right, so. Right? So as fun so, as it is to use the Tetris bricks, there's nothing but there's particularly nothing, special. But they, there's nothing special at all. Um, I see. There's obviously no scientific literature on the Tetris <laughs> model. There should be. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of physical literature on this one, which is called right. ballistic deposition. So that's, okay. that's the one where you just have single bricks, but they stick to neighbors. Right. Right? Because that's somehow one of the simplest ones you can imagine. So, so, right? It's easier to formulate than, yeah, okay. than the Tetris one. But of course, if Tetris just used these bricks, it would be a less fun game. Right. Right? <laughs>